So I got a great question from a viewer about how do I know when it's time to stop supplementing with betaine HCL. So if you're supplementing with betaine HCL to correct any low stomach acid issues or hypochlorhydria or symptoms that can come from low stomach acid, it's important to understand how do I know when I don't need this anymore? Am I going to ruin all of my progress if I just stop or what's the deal? So in this video, I'm going to help you understand signs and things to look at to understand when is it time to reduce or to no longer need this supplemental betaine HCL. Let's jump in. C. Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So just remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving anybody medical advice as far as taking betaine HCL or not. But you can see a lot of the information that we'll talk about in this study on mealtime supplementation with betaine HCL for functional hypochlorhydra. What's the evidence? And I'll put that link in the description below so you can dig deeper into this if you want to look a little bit more. But this study talks about a lot of the basic information that you hear from the thousands of practitioners out there who use betaine HCL with their clients. And this study even mentioned, look, there's not a lot of studies out there and scientific evidence for using betaine HCL to correct digestive symptoms. But from the thousands of practitioners out there, there's enough anecdotal evidence to show that, look, you can really acidify a stomach that's not acidifying correctly by using this betaine HCL. And a lot of this study went over the basic basic steps that you kind of hear from a lot of practitioners and that's to basically that a person would start off with one betaine HCL capsule in the middle of their meal and as long as they didn't feel any discomfort the next meal they could go up to two and a lot of these things will tell you all oh, you really got to watch out for a warming or burning sensation in your stomach. That means that you used a little bit too much HCL and then you want to back down by one capsule and that's your right dose that you want to use. So when we're looking at how long do I need to use it, we kind of want to understand these things as well. And this is the advice that you really see out there, but I'll let you know that it's, it's really not that accurate. When you put it actually into test and you do this with the thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that I've heard from, from reading my books and taking courses and such that it, it just doesn't always work out that way. Most people will never feel this warming sensation that people talk about. You know, when I was first starting to use HCL, I was taking like 13 capsules with a meal and I wouldn't feel anything. And the reason that I was doing that is because I had a significant bacterial overgrowth in the stomach and the waste from that bacteria is often very alkaline. And so that alkaline waste is neutralizing the whatever stomach acid is in the stomach, whether the person's making it or whether they're supplementing with it. But a lot of these studies will say, yeah, just increase the dose until you feel this warming sensation. I do not tell people to do that. I do not think that that's even a good idea. You know, the human stomach is supposed to make the equivalent of about 2,500 milligrams of HCL. And that's usually about five capsules with most of the manufacturers that produce HCL. So we kind of look at, you know, five capsules as a maximum dose. And I'm not telling you to take five capsules. I'm just saying what we hear from a lot of people. And so if someone gets up to five capsules and they're still not improving their symptoms, it's usually because there's some type of overgrowth that's alkalizing the stomach and not allowing it to acidify correctly. So instead of going up to 13 capsules in a meal like this idiot did, we like to see people take steps to reduce that overgrowth. So in that situation, they're usually not taking enough to really feel a warming. The warming is supposed to come when your body starts to make more of its own HCL, and then you also have the HCL that you just supplemented with, so when that becomes too much HCL, it can create a warming sensation. And I feel that this is possible, and we have heard from people that experience this. The more likely symptom from using too much HCL is like a loose stool, uh, because the person doesn't have enough bile and bicarb to really neutralize that level of HCL. And then it comes screaming out the back door uh, because it's all moving too fast and it's too acidic. So that seems to be a more common uh, symptom. And, you know, a lot of the steps that you see about using HCL when you're first starting out is if you take one and you have any discomfort, just stop taking it. It's not right for you. But you also need to understand that that's not always correct either. Like it's very common when someone just starts using HCL 
to experience magnified acid reflux, or maybe they're having reflux now and they've never had it before. And this is extremely common because we need to have enough acid in the stomach to trigger that LES valve at the bottom of the esophagus to close. That's triggered by stomach acid. So if someone just puts a small amount in there, but it's not enough acid to trigger that valve to close, well, now the small amount of acid that's in there is coming back up and giving them reflux. So it's very common for someone to start off with one or two capsules and have reflux, but once they get up to a high enough dose, then the reflux stops because now the stomach is acidic enough to trigger that valve to close. And with bloating type symptoms or nausea kind of situations, if someone has a significant overgrowth with all this alkaline waste, when you put a little bit of acid in there, then that acid is going to mix with the alkaline waste and it creates like this fizzy mess, like if you were mixing baking soda and vinegar together. So when you do that, it's really going to magnify symptoms. So if someone has magnified symptoms like that when they start HCL, we like to see them take steps to reduce uh, bacterial overgrowth and then test out HCL again instead of just assuming that it's not really right for them. We've also heard from people who would take like one HCL capsule and like, oh, I, I feel, I think I feel a warming. And a lot of times they're mistaking that combination of a little bit of acid with that alkaline waste creating a fizzy mess as a warming sensation. So if a person has a lot of digestive symptoms like bloating and such, and they take one HCL and feel like what they think is a warming, it's usually not that they don't, oh, I don't need HCL, I have plenty it's usually that they're having this combination of acid and alkaline just a discomfort thing now if a person has a burning like sensation in their stomach then that could be like an ulcer and you don't really want to be taking hydrochloric acid if you have an open wound in your stomach so we'll put a link in the description below for our video on dealing with ulcers in the stomach and we talk about using cabbage juice and steps that can really heal that lining up and it's just it's important to understand that ulcers are not caused by having too much much stomach acid like we believed in the 80s when we were wearing parachute pants we know that ulcers in the stomach are really caused by a bacterial overgrowth and that's what's creating that inflammation that creates that open wound and usually the bacterial overgrowth is there because the person didn't have enough stomach acid to wipe out the bad guys when they came in the front door so it's just really common for someone even to get up to a full dose of HCL and still have some discomfort from that, you know, killing off a, a bacterial overgrowth or the the alkaline waste mixing with the acidity um, because the HCL makes it less of a hospitable environment for a lot of different types of, of varmints that might come in on the food that you're eating. But that doesn't mean it's going to kill them all. It's there to kind of wipe them out as they come in. But if there's already an overgrowth, you need a significant amount of acid to really take care of that. And it's usually not going to be enough to really kill them all off. They all hide down in this mucus lining, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So most people need to take other steps to reduce that overgrowth. And then all of a sudden that 5-HCL per meal is going to be enough to acidify the stomach correctly. And a lot of people will ask, you know, well, should I use pepsin or not? And pepsin is something else that helps us break down proteins. And that's what the, something that the body makes. And a lot of HCL capsules will include pepsin. And there's nothing wrong with pepsin. It actually can aid the digestion. But in my books and such, we always talk about using some type of HCL that does not include pepsin. Because if somebody works up to like five per meal, that's a lot of pepsin and that much pepsin can create discomfort for a lot of people. So we just have people use it without it in case they need to do that and then that doesn't create as much discomfort for them. And some people will even say don't use HCL if you have SIBO or something like that because the hydrogen feeds you know, bacteria and makes them thrive more. And we just don't hold that viewpoint. It's not the same thing. You know, people make stomach acid. That's what every human does. And there are aspects, that hydrogen aspect in that hydrochloric acid that a lot of bacteria can eat. But when it comes in in an HCL format, we just don't view it the same way. And we like to see people taking steps to reduce that overgrowth. If you were just going to use HCL, then maybe it would create some trouble. But we like to see people take steps to reduce that overgrowth. And we'll put a link in the description below on our video on steps to reduce bacteria in the stomach so you can check that out. But as long as somebody's taking that steps, then we feel like it's okay to use HCL and we see a lot of success doing that.
So when it looks like, okay, all right, everything's going well. I improved my symptoms. Now, how do I know when it's time to start reducing this HCL that I'm using? And that's what we like to see people do. We like to see them reduce the dose that they're using because the, the goal is that Basically, a lot of people can't make hydrochloric acid because the body doesn't have the nutrients it needs to create that hydrochloric acid. There needs to be a lot of minerals and things like that. That chloride ion is important and things that the body needs to make it. But they're not digesting their food well enough to get the nutrients and minerals out of that food. So then they get stuck in this cycle of broken digestion for years or decades. So the goal is, okay, supplement with HCL so you can acidify your food, break it down well enough to get more nutrients out of that food, and now the body has the nutrients it needs to start making its own HCL. And that's the goal. But keep in mind that a lot of people are not making enough HCL for other reasons. There's other reasons that the body can't make HCL. Maybe somebody's really stressed or maybe the body is really stressed and it's just pushed really far into this sympathetic state where it's not very good at making hydrochloric acid. The body needs to move into the parasympathetic rest and digest state of the autonomic nervous system to be able to really make hydrochloric acid. And I'll point you to a video where you can learn more about other things that can block that production at the end of this video. But what's important to understand is that for most people, when they get enough nutrients, they can start making it. So what you want to do is when your symptoms like bloating or burping or acid reflux or constipation or seeing undigested food in your stool or really low blood pressure, you know, those are usually the, the signs that show up from a lack of stomach acid. There can be other things like nausea, you know, it's very common too. And there's other symptoms, but when you're seeing these symptoms improve, then you can test out, well, how do I do if I reduce the normal dose that I take by one capsule? And I do that for a few days. Do I still do okay? Or do I start to see some of those symptoms come back? And the amount of protein you have in a meal can kind of dictate how much HCL you need to supplement with for that meal. So you might even test out, oh, you know, this meal doesn't have as much protein in it. Or maybe it's an easier to digest protein, like eggs. Eggs are easier to digest than like a ribeye steak. So with this meal, maybe I'll test out using less HCL and see how I do. If I do okay with that, then maybe I'll test out using less HCL with a meal that might be having more protein or harder to digest. So just test out how you do when you reduce by a capsule. If you do okay for a few days, then test out removing another capsule and, and see how you do from there. And just keep in mind that your ability to reduce capsules may initially have to do with the fact that you've reduced an overgrowth. So maybe there's not as much alkaline waste in the stomach coming from a bacterial overgrowth. So now it's easier to acidify that stomach. Maybe you don't need as many capsules to acidify that, even if your stomach is not making a whole lot more HCL. So that that can be one factor that can allow a person to reduce the amount of HCL that they're using, but they might not be able to go down to zero if the body really isn't making enough of its own. So we like to see people reduce by one and just continue to do that until you don't need any anymore. And then you can see, do any of those symptoms come back and indicate that, okay, I do still need a little bit of help and I need to continue using this for a little bit longer. And you've probably heard me talk a lot about when if a client is using betaine HCL, we really want them to use beet flow as well to make sure that bile is thin enough to flow so that you can neutralize all those acids as they leave the stomach. And we feel that that's important just so a person doesn't create like a duodenal ulcer from having way too much acid in there and having an inability to neutralize those acids. But once a person is doesn't need to use the betaine HCL anymore and they're doing great without using that, then they don't really need to use the bead flow anymore as long as they're not showing signs of poor bile flow. As long as any signs that were indicating that bile wasn't flowing correctly have improved, then they don't need to use that. And maybe they'll just need to use those things occasionally. Maybe they'll just use HCL when they're traveling to some other place and don't really know what they're really eating right now. So maybe they want some extra help to make sure they're going to kill off any bad guys that come in. Or maybe they get really stressed in their life at some point and the body has a harder time making HCL. So they'll supplement with a little bit at that time. But once the issue is corrected, the goal should be that you really don't need that anymore. These are not made to use indefinitely. When you correct the issues, you should be able to move away from them and just use them from time to time if you need a little bit of help. And if you remove them and the symptoms come back, that's just an indication that you still need some help. And that's okay. It's okay to need some help. That's better than the alternative of dealing with the horrible symptoms for years or decades like so many of us have done.
So don't feel like you're broken. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in the body, and some of them we have no clue about yet. We really don't understand how this whole mechanisms work. We just do the best we can with the information that we have. So you can work through it and keep trying to learn things, but if you just need a little bit of help, that's okay. So I hope that helps you figure out how to reduce and come off of the supplements when it's time to do so. Right now, if you want to learn more about other things that can restrict the body's ability to make its own hydrochloric acid, you can jump over and check out our video on why can't my stomach make hydrochloric acid. I can't wait to hear about your results.